Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another presentation of Virtual College Exploration in Ohio, sponsored by the Ohio Association of College Admission Counselors. Uh, my name is Robin Marufo, and I'm with the University of Toledo. And tonight, we are very fortunate to have Mr. Christopher Wild with us from Goucher College. Before Chris starts his presentation, I'd just like to take a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds actually, to cover some very basic things with you. There is a Q&A button that you can click so that you can ask questions of Christopher. There will be plenty of other sessions that you can sign up for through the Ohio Association of College Admission Counselors. You simply visit the same site that you used for today, and that is www.oacac.org. And just to let you know, on that site, the recording from this evening's session with Chris will be available on that website, so the session is to be recorded. And also, just to let you know, your camera and microphone are off, and the only way to really interact is to ask questions. So I'm going to hand it over to Christopher now, and thank you both for joining us. and steal the screen share from you. Awesome. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Chris Wild. I'm Associate Director of Admissions at Goucher College. Uh, thank you for taking some time out of your schedules to come spend it with me. Um, so what I want to focus in on the next kind of 45 minutes or so uh, is uh, telling you a little bit about Goucher and really focusing in on those things that make Goucher different. Um, I imagine that kind of as you're going about your college search process, you're probably attending a lot of these virtual sessions, maybe scouring our websites. And if you're looking at a lot of small residential liberal arts colleges, uh, you we probably all start to sound the same after a while. So what I really wanna focus in on are those things that make Goucher different uh, and kind of be our guiding principle for the presentation today. So one of the first things that comes to mind uh, in terms of what makes Goucher a little bit different is our location. Uh, we're kind of the rare example of a liberal arts college that is not out in the middle of a cornfield, uh, but is in a major metropolitan area. We have access to, we're just 20 minutes north of downtown Baltimore, an hour north of Washington, D.C., on this really great I-95 corridor, right kind of smack in the middle of the east, eastern seaboard uh, with easy access to all of these great cities. Uh, Baltimore really is a great college town um, and an ideal location for, for a college. There are about 15, 16 colleges in Baltimore, close to 160,000 college students and so it is a really great environment uh, and a really great college town vibe and feel. Um, there are opportunities to collaborate at these other institutions. Um, and so uh, we have uh, the Baltimore Student Exchange, which allows you to take classes at these other colleges and universities, as well as a free shuttle service that gets you around the city of Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore really is a city of neighborhoods. It's kind of uh, the, the kind of a, a really accessible and kind of easy to navigate big city, each having each of the neighborhoods kind of having their own little flair or quirk or thing that they offer and bring to the table. Um, and again, just being in a major city, access to internships, things to do, a really great place to, to have a college. Uh, we sit about, uh, as I mentioned, we're a liberal arts institution. We sit about 20 minutes north of downtown Baltimore on 287 acres. So you get the best of both worlds. You have that residential campus experience, that residential campus feel, guaranteed housing for all four years. Uh, and so you're really able to take advantage of that great space. Uh, just to give you a feel for the campus, we have about 15 or 1,400 undergraduate students, 1,400. And we have small classes. Class sizes, classes are gonna average about 14, uh, 15 to 20 students in a class. Uh, we have an amazing 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So you really get to know your professors. They are the ones teaching the classes, not teaching assistants or graduate assistants. Uh, so you really get to develop a strong relationship with your professors. Uh, just to give you a feel for the diversity of the campus body, uh, just doing a little snapshot of last year's incoming class. Um, about 61% out of state. Uh, California was the fifth largest state representing student population. So very much a national, international liberal arts college, about 38% students of color. Uh, so strong racial and ethnic diversity to the campus. And about 30% of, 30 of our students were the first in their family to go to college. So a large first generation student college population. Uh, and about 40% of our students identified under the umbrella of LGBTQIA+. And so Gouch is a really diverse community and kind of the multiple ways of looking at and assessing a college's diversity. And that's really important for you as students. Uh, we recognize that really the number one skill that employers <clears throat> are seeking in college grads is the ability to solve complex problems in groups with people who are different from yourself. And so having students who haven't have different backgrounds, different experiences uh, from those of your own uh, is, is really important. It adds to the learning, it adds to the perspectives you can learn from in your classes uh, and from your classmates. I said I wanted to focus really in on those things that make Goucher a little bit different. <clears throat> 
and really it's our approach to the traditional liberal arts idea. And so in the next couple of slides, I'm going to talk about our common curriculum. I'm going to talk about our experiential learning opportunities and then talk a little bit about career education towards the end there for talking about student life. Um, Goucher is, uh, or sorry, I should say the Goucher Commons curriculum right, is our core curriculum. And it's different from pretty much every other liberal, liberal arts college. Uh, and that's by design. Uh, most liberal arts colleges are still operating under a model we refer to as distribution requirements, where you're required to distribute yourself amongst a bunch of different disciplines. So you have to take a science and a social science and a class in history and a class in culture. And uh, at the end of this process, you've checked all the boxes. You, you we say, congratulations, you've done it. You are well-rounded. Uh, However, most colleges fail to do the most important part, which is now that you have this baseline knowledge in different subjects, how do you apply that knowledge? How do you think about things or think about topics from an interdisciplinary perspective? And that's where the Goucher Commons curriculum comes in. Ours is really centered around a series of seminar classes. The first one you're going to take is during the first semester of your first year, and we call it the first year seminar. It's very creatively titled. Uh, and this is meant to be that kind of introduction to a college level seminar discussion based class. Get you used to what are the expectations, the workload, what does the classroom environment look like? Uh, but it also serves a couple of other purposes. <coughs> Excuse me. One is that we recognize that a majority of high schools in the United States, they have done an excellent job at killing your passion for learning that because your entire 9 through 12 experience has become so hyper focused on preparing for the test uh, that your classrooms have become these many little test prep factories where all you do is going to study all you do is study what's going to be on the test and strategies for taking the test and it hasn't really provided an environment for you to do a deep dive into a topic because it sparks a passion or it's of interest to you. Uh, and so we want to make this a class that excites you. We offer 25, uh, 26 different sections of the first year seminar class, and each one is different, focusing in on a different topic or a different theme. Uh, we've offered classes on apocalyptic arts, interpretation of the apocalypse, on uh, censorship and free speech and journalism. Uh, there's a class called uh, Where the Wild Things Are that looks at cultural attitudes towards the wilderness and towards nature. Uh, there's a class called The Secret Life of Puppets with the history and culture of puppetry as a storytelling medium. Uh, genomes for jocks and docs so let's see is there some sort of connection between genetics and athleticism and while we're getting you excited about learning we're doing something else that's really important not only are we showing you what our faculty think about but more importantly we are showing you how ultimately we recognize that our job as an institution is to prepare you for the jobs of the future and the only thing we know about the jobs of the future is we know nothing about the jobs of the future. They don't exist yet. They haven't been discovered and invented yet. And so what we really need to train our students to become is a strong self-regulated learner. So that as new things are invented and created, you're able to learn those things, teach yourself these things, adapt and grow and change. And so if that's our goal for you, then we have to model what that behavior looks like. In a special way, this also prepares you for the core or the kind of heart of this new curriculum, uh, which is the complex problem exploration or CPE classes. <clears throat> These are classes you'll take two of. Um, you'll have anywhere from eight to 10 different options in a given semester. And they're classes that are interdisciplinary in nature, but focused on complex issues and complex problems uh, and use that interdisciplinary approach to kind of come to a deeper understanding of them. Uh, give you a couple of examples. We offered a class in a prior term called Nations, Borders and Immigration. And in that class, you know, at many colleges, a class in immigration was probably kind of solely focused on it from a political perspective political science uh, standpoint, but not in this class. Uh, this class started with history because we haven't always had nations and we haven't always had borders. So where do these things come from? How do they evolve over time? Uh, it does bring in the political science as well as international relations, look at policy, as well as the relationship between countries that share a border. Uh, then it takes the next step to say, well, immigration is a human issue, right? It's people who are immigrating. So that involves sociology and anthropology to understand more about, well, who immigrates and why? What are the reasons and motivations? Someone would pack up their lives, pack up their families, move from one country to another. And lastly, lastly, dabbled a little bit into economics. What are the economic impacts and influences around immigration? Not what are the pundits on TV say, but what is the reality of that? So ultimately, to come to a really nuanced understanding of immigration, it's going to take five or six different disciplines to get there. There was another class called Embodying Lemonade uh, that looked at Beyonce's album Lemonade from the perspective of her as a black feminist icon and compared her work to the works of historical and contemporary black feminist writers, authors, poets, musicians, artists. Again, the central question being this idea of the politics of bodies. Uh, what does it mean for a woman of color to make an artistic statement? How is that looked at, viewed, and interpreted by society? Um, so through this process, through these complex 
complex problem explorations, we're hoping you develop that skill of solving complex problems in groups of people who are different from you, that skill that employers are looking for. We also know that there are other skills that employers and graduate schools are looking for, and that's where these three areas of proficiency come in. Uh, for us, that's writing, data analytics, and foreign language and culture. Uh, writing and data analytics, I love these requirements. You're required to take two classes. The first classes are general courses working on general skills, and the second class is embedded within your major or embedded within a field of studies. So you're seeing how do I use data analytics within my major, or within my field? How do I write within my field or within uh, for, for my profession? Uh, which to me is just a really great benefit because if you're like me and you're kind of sitting in the back of stats class, you're going, when am I ever going to use this? You know, the second data analysis class is going to help you that, through that. Uh, and then foreign language and culture. We offer Spanish, French, and Arabic at Goucher. Uh, there are other languages you can pursue through the Baltimore Student Exchange that I mentioned earlier. Um, but every student will be required to take at least one course uh, in foreign language and culture while they are at Goucher because we don't look at this as so much a language fluency requirement as much as we look at it as a cultural competency requirement and understanding culture through language. Additionally, as an institution, we've made commitments to areas of justice, justice amongst the natural world, which is environmental sustainability, and justice amongst people, which is a race, power, and perspective requirement. These are not kind of take the class, check the box, meet the requirement, uh, you've done it. Uh, they're really meant to be themes that you continually encounter all throughout your four years at Goucher. For instance, with race, power, and perspective, our, our summer reading assignment for new students typically deals with elements of race, power, and perspective. Uh, you'll see speakers, you'll see classes dealing with race, power, perspective, or environmental sustainability. Ability. You'll see classes within your major uh, that are earmarked as having dealing with elements of justice in these in these two commitments. And so it is really a kind of a four year kind of full experience requirement and that you'll be constantly exposed and, and thinking about these areas of justice. In addition to our curriculum, every single student at Goucher will choose a major. We offer over 25 different programs as well as a handful of minors, which I'll show you in a second. And these are really great. Um, we tend to attract students who are multi-interested, have multiple passions, want to be able to double major, have a major and a minor, a major and a handful of minors. And so that is flexible. We offer everything from your STEM fields to your fine and performing arts and a little bit of everything in between. One program I love to highlight on this slide is the Individualized Interdisciplinary Major, which is designed for students who have a really strong interest in a particular kind of area or some or kind of a particular topic that they really want to deep, do a deep dive into. And what it allows you to do is take, uh, you know, four, three or four of Goucher's existing programs and work with a faculty advisor to create your own major out of that. In addition to the uh, majors, we also offer a handful of minors. These can, can be done as majors, can, but can be added on to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, can be added on to uh, any existing major as kind of a, an extra area of concentration or as a minor. Uh, just highlighting some of our new programs. We've been in a process of kind of rethinking and reimagining majors. Um, and we've launched eight new majors, as well as two new minors. So we launched a minor in music, as well as a minor in religion and justice. Uh, with these majors, I love them because they're interdisciplinary in nature. They're designed for 21st century skills and 21st century jobs. Uh, particularly, I love in integrative arts studies, uh, this kind of focus on what it means to be an artist um, and allowing students to pull from studio art, from theater, from music, from dance, all into that one program if that's how they want to express their art. Maybe you want to pull one of them. Maybe you want to pull two of them or three of them. Uh, you have that flexibility rather than saying, oh, you can only do dance or you can only do theater. How do you want to express yourself as an artist? Engineering science, uh, which is a kind of a unique major for a liberal arts college, really laying that foundation for going into graduate programs in engineering, uh, focusing on the foundational skills across all types of engineering, and then allowing our students to concentrate, say, in environmental engineering or biomedical or chemical engineering as they move through the program a little bit uh, as they move through the program. <clears throat> We very much believe that learning doesn't just happen in the classroom, that learning is meant to be experienced. Um, so we have a number of experiential learning opportunities that uh, our students participate in. And actually about 75% of our students will complete an internship during their time at Goucher. And internships are a great way to figure out if this thing that you think you love and wanna do with the rest of your life is something that you actually love and wanna do with the rest of your life. Um, I thought I wanted to be an accountant. And luckily for me, I had an, an internship at an accounting firm in my uh, between my junior and senior year of high school. And at the end of that summer, I realized something really important. I hated accounting. Uh, and so that clearly wasn't my path for me. Uh, but I did find uh, actually my job now in admissions through an internship that I took on in college. And so we have an amazing career education office that works with our students to find internship opportunities. They also offer services like um, resume critiques and mock interviews, uh, the look over your cover letter. 
they um, provide some really great services there. They also oversee a system called Goucher Recruit, which is an internal website that internship and employment providers can <clears throat> submit opportunities uh, and then our students can apply directly for those. Another really great resource in terms of internships are also your faculty. Um, the faculty really take the time to get to know their students, especially the ones that they're advising, uh, and really take on this mentor-mentee role. Um, I heard a great story this summer uh, of this, one of our students who was majoring in peace studies was very interested in justice and peace in outer space. Um, and so they went to the professor who is a uh, Sepla and said, you know, I'm really, this is what I'm interested in. You know, what are the internship opportunities or what, what could be an opportunity? Um, and they started talking and the students said, well, what about NASA? Could I get an internship at NASA? And several goes, well, I don't know anyone at NASA, but we can make some phone calls. Long story short, they end up securing an internship at NASA for this student. Uh, and <clears throat> ultimately, when she completed that internship, uh, she was offered a job and is now working at NASA. So a really cool uh, opportunity. Again, internships, a great way to get your foot in the door. Um, as a small institution, again, 1,400 students, about uh, 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio, there are a lot of great opportunities for research um, across programs, not just in the sciences, although we do have a really amazing summer science research program where students live on campus over the summer. They get paid a stipend from the college. They're working in the labs Monday through Friday and really focused on um, their, their work as, as, a, as, as uh, doing research. At the end of that experience, they go on and present at professional conferences to get that professional development experience. Uh, there's also an opportunity through the Kratz Center for Creative Writing for a summer writing fellowship, uh, which is essentially just a check made out to students to say, to cover any costs associated with being a writer over the summer. Maybe you need to pay your bills, maybe you need food, maybe you wanna travel and experience someplace that you can write about it more vividly. Um, and so these are just two great examples of opportunities in the summer, but they exist during the academic year as well. Faculty are very much engaged in research. Our students are very much engaged in independent studies and working alongside faculty on their own research. And so there's really a lot of great opportunities there. A really cool project that a lot of our students are working on right now uh, is a project called the Hallowed, Hallowed Ground Project. Uh, Goucher's campus actually sits on land that was formerly a plantation that had enslaved persons uh, who, worked on the, who worked on the plantation. Uh, and so our, we actually have some remnants of that plantation on our campus is actually a lime kiln uh, on campus and we're beginning to do archaeology work and uncovering this lime kiln. We're doing research into the lives of the folks who lived and worked uh, on, the, on the land. And so a really cool opportunity to kind of understand a little bit more about Goucher's history uh, and a really kind of interesting project. Uh, with lots of opportunities for student engagement. One of the things that we are probably most well known for is the fact that we require 100% of our students to have an international study abroad experience. Uh, we became the first college in 2006, and we're still one of only two colleges in the country that require 100% of its undergrads to have an international study abroad experience. Uh, we currently offer over 65 different programs in over 36 different countries, Asia, Africa, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Central and South America, all represented pretty much anywhere in the world except for Canada, Mexico, Antarctica, and North Korea, which is not the safest place to go. Uh, you have the option of studying abroad for either a full semester or something as short as three weeks. Semester programs are partnerships that have established the foreign university, so you can go to a foreign school, you're taking their classes, you're living in their housing with a host family, and very much working on things towards your major, your minor, kind of other program requirements back on campus. A couple of nice things with the semester model. One is that we've already established the articulation agreements, uh, so you don't have to worry about, if I take this class over here, am I going to get credit for it? Yes, we've already taken care of all that. We know what things will transfer back as. The other nice piece is we use what's called a home tuition model. And so we're going to apply all of the financial aid and all of the scholarships that would have been applied to your semester at Goucher to your semester abroad. On top of that, we're going to promise that you won't pay more in tuition for your semester abroad than you would pay for tuition at Goucher. So commitment to keeping these programs affordable. Uh, the other option is what we call the intensive course abroad or the ICA. Intensive courses abroad are about three weeks, typically held over the summer, and are programs that are created and led by the faculty at Goucher. So in those programs, you're going with a group of Goucher students alongside of Goucher faculty in a program that was developed by that faculty member. Uh, these tend to be more thematic or kind of maybe uh, kind of have a particular emphasis uh, in, in their study. Um, some of them are even interdisciplinary in nature. Uh, there's a really cool program that goes to Costa Rica. That's a joint program between the Spanish language major and the Latin American studies, or sorry, the Spanish language major and the environmental studies major. Uh, and so it's part language immersion program going to work on your Spanish language skills, while at the same time doing a deep dive into the environmental impacts of development in Costa Rica. Uh, so as they continue to develop and construct and grow as a country, um, what, what is that, what is happening to the environment? What is that happening to that natural habitat? Um, are they doing 
doing any kind of conservation, what conservation work is being done and what kind of conservation work isn't being done. Uh, so a really cool opportunity to, to get your hands dirty. Um, there's another opportunity in, uh, for an intensive course abroad in France that focuses on theater. Uh, there's a program for dance in uh, Ghana. Uh, so again, some really, really cool options here. Uh, I can't stress enough how different it is to be at an institution where everyone studies abroad. Uh, it definitely changes the dynamic on campus. It changes the kinds of conversations that we're having in the classroom. Uh, the things take on much more of a global perspective or a global feel all throughout your time at Goucher, not just when you're abroad. I know for many institutions, study abroad is kind of that weird thing you go and do, and then it's kind of just disconnected or disjointed from your on-campus experience. <clears throat> excuse me. And so we've been very intentional as we've had this requirement to really think about how we integrate the study abroad and the global perspective into our on campus offerings. The last area of experiential learning I want to talk about is uh, community based learning. Uh, Goucher, uh, this, many colleges will probably call this their community service office, and we very intentionally don't. Uh, we have been very, very thoughtful in how we go about this kind of work and really ask uh, and really develop and sought to develop long term sustained partnerships with uh, different community organizations and community partners. Uh, and so we have nine or eight or nine signature weekly programs uh, that all kind of focus on different things. But uh, when we when we go about this work, we really want our students to really think about uh, what are the systemic issues at, at play? You know, what is what is the reason that these kinds of organizations exist? Why does this work need to happen? Um, and thinking about in, in embracing the issues of social justice, but also reflecting on our own biases. Um, and so it's a really great way to get connected and get engaged. And I can't remember now. Um, so in, in terms of our partnerships, you know, opportunities exist for a men's, a men's and women's shelter. Uh, there's a partnership for middle school mentoring. There's one with a therapeutic farm, a horse farm. Um, so there's a lot of really cool ways of getting connected. And in the same way that Goucher has made a commitment to these community partners, we ask our students to make that same commitment and commit to a long-term sustained uh, relationship with one of our community organizations and really stick with that for a full semester. The last thing I wanna talk about is uh, in terms of kind of academics, of course, switching gears a little bit, is this idea of career education. Every college in the country as a career center or a career office or a career, whatever they call it, career is usually in the name. And they're great. There are these places you can go to and they'll help you with a cover, lay, cover letter and a, a resume. They'll do mock interviews. They probably have an etiquette dinner and a fashion show, right? And they provide all of these great resources except for one thing. You have to go and seek these opportunities out. You have to overcome the inertia of your daily life, your daily routine to set up and make the appointment and go to the appointment. So while we have a career education office that does all of those wonderful things, we also have a career education program. And we call this program the Goucher Advantage. And the reason we call it that is because we've taken elements of career education and embedded them into the places and spaces we already know you will be. So that career education isn't something extra that has to be sought out, but frankly, it's something that you're gonna be forced to encounter all throughout your time at Goucher, uh, even in that first year. Uh, in that first year seminar class uh, that we were talking about uh, or a little bit earlier, uh, the emphasis is on this idea of kind of self-knowledge, uh, thinking about what are your passions, what are your interests, connecting them to opportunities at Goucher, to majors, uh, to potential career paths and graduate programs. Not that we're asking you to pick your major, we don't even ask you to declare or pick your career, we don't even ask you to declare your major until the end of sophomore year, um, but really to begin kind of opening up your mind to what are the opportunities that exist that are in alignment with the things that I'm already passionate about. And then to this point of kind of personal branding and the writing class that you're required to take, we're going to make sure by the end of that class you have a cover letter, a resume, and a LinkedIn profile. So you have the spaces and places to then go back out or you can go to all throughout your time at Goucher and add to it the new skills and the things that you're learning in your classes. <clears throat> and so that you have this really great repository of all of your skills and all of your experiences. So when you go to apply for an internship or for a job or for grad school, you have this great resume that you can then pull from and create one that is tailored specific to that particular thing that you're applying for. Um, so really cool, cool kind of uh, concept here to embed these elements of career education all throughout your Goucher experience. Uh, if you haven't picked up on a theme yet, uh, one of the themes I hope you would walk away with is that you really get to take ownership of the Goucher experience. You really get to make a lot of choices. And so we have a number of student-centered resources to help you throughout your time at Goucher. Uh, every single one of our incoming students is assigned a professional pre-major academic advisor. Uh, these are three folks whose sole job it is, is to advise our undeclared and, un and students who haven't 
declared a major yet. Uh, and so their job is to be experts in the curriculum, to know the entry points to all of the majors, and they take the time to get to know their students, to know you, your passions, your interests, and help you make selections in terms of our core curriculum or in terms of uh, maybe classes to, 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 to figure out, to, to uh, excuse me, uh, classes that you might want to step into and try out if you're thinking about maybe that's what I want to major in. Uh, they're also there to help you avoid common pitfalls. Uh, if you, you know, I think I want to major in biology. Well, if you think you want to major in biology, you need to major, you need to take bio 101 in the first semester or you're not going to be able to graduate on time. So helping our students there. Uh, once you declare a major, which you're not required to do until the end of sophomore year, uh, then you move to a faculty advisor in your field. Uh, for students who are thinking about the pre-med, pre-health pathway, there is a separate advisor who works with those students and is able to help with preparation for entrance exams, application process, and really helps you pick those elective courses that are going to really lay that solid foundation for medical school. Uh, the cool thing with uh, the pre-med program at the undergrad level is it's oversaw by the same person who oversees our uh, post-bac pre-med program. Uh, that program is for students who already have a bachelor's degree want to get that kind of uh, foundational kind of get some skills work in before going into med school that program has a 99 percent admit rate into medical school so you're getting the same quality and caliber of advising of uh, mentorship of classwork that the students in that program are getting the academic center for excellence the quantitative reasoning center and the writing center serve as generalized academic support services, quantitative reasoning center working uh, working around data analytics and mathematics, writing working with the right, a writing center working with writing, um, and then the academic center for Excel, uh, excellence or ACE is providing more generalized support services. They have academic success coaches that you can meet one on one with. Um, you can uh, go see a peer tutor there. They do different workshops on like time management skills and study skills. Uh, also, if a student has a documented learning difference, this is where you would go uh, for accommodations. <clears throat> And then lastly, Navigate is this really cool mobile application that our students get to download when they get to campus. And it allows you to actually make appointments with your professors right through the app. Uh, it also allows you to make appointments with like the Academic Server Excellence or other offices on campus. And then it also is a place where our professors are able to give you progress reports as you move through uh, your, your semester. And so they give them out uh, kind of periodically throughout the semester. You can see how you're doing in your classes and be able to make adjustments or continue going down the great path that you're going on. We are a residential campus. Uh, we guarantee housing for all four years and we expect our students to live on campus for all four years. Uh, we really believe in the residential model. We believe that as much learning that is happening um, <clears throat> in our classrooms is also happening in the residence halls, in the dining hall, and walking up and down the sidewalk, that all of your interactions are all opportunities for learning. In the last couple of years, we've been in a process of really rethinking and reimagining the physical spaces on campus to better foster relationships, to better foster uh, places that kind of create and cause conversation. Uh, so one of the things we built was this first year student village, a series of three residence halls that were specifically designed with our first year students in mind. They were designed to provide spaces that really kind of fostered engagement, fostered connection. We know one of the most important things to a student success in college is making friends, building that social support network, so creating buildings that better foster that. Uh, and then our Mary Fisher Dining Center, moving dining into the heart of our, our campus and centralizing the dining facility, bringing all of our diverse dining options into one place. Um, We've actually been ranked as high as 19th in the nation for food. Um, so a really great space showing off the wonderful food that we have. The most popular station is this station called Kraft, uh, which is this uh, create your own stir fry station. There's a smorgasbord of all different toppings. You fill a bowl up with all of your uh, desired uh, toppings for your stir fry. You hand it over to the chef. He throws it on this giant Mongolian grill. Uh, he stirs it up and then you get fresh stir fry uh, to take out to the table and go chat with your friends while you enjoy a meal together. Um, there's a lot going on on campus, a lot of things to get involved in. Uh, the Center for Race, Equity, and Identity, or CREE as we like to call it, is a place for marginalized and underrepresented students um, to <clears throat> kind of have uh, support services as well as have a home. Uh, this is where you'll see a lot of cultural groups and affinity groups that are based um, and they, it's inclusive to all people and they like to kind of create events and create discussions and opportunities to come together as a community uh, to learn more about each other's identities and, and grow from that. Uh, there's a lot going on outside the classroom, over 60 different clubs, organizations, uh, everything from clubs based around majors to causes, social movements, political movements, uh, clubs based around shared interests. Uh, uh, one of my personal favorites is a group called Humans vs. Zombies, uh, which is actually a game that was created by Goucher students in 2005. Uh, we, were the, we, were the, we were the original creators of, of Humans vs. Zombies, so let any other college tell you differently. Uh, it's essentially this giant game of tag involving Nerf guns. Um, <clears throat> and so, 
uh, everyone that wants to play signs up. One person at random is chosen to be the original zombie, and they have to go around tagging humans, converting them into zombies. Uh, the game is played out over the course of an entire week, so it's a very strategic uh, component to the game. Uh, and uh, each side has different missions to fulfill. The humans get to be equipped with Nerf guns, so you can actually shoot a zombie with a Nerf gun. It stuns them for a few moments, allowing you to make your escape. Uh, the manager of the Target in town says that they sell more Nerf guns than any Target in the state of Maryland. So definitely a really happy, popular pastime um, and, and one of my favorite Goucher clubs. Uh, it only takes four students and an advisor to start a new club. So new clubs are constantly popping up uh, from year to year um, <clears throat> based on what our students are interested in. A couple of years ago, we had a group of students who were really into um, uh, grilling and barbecuing. And so they created the Goucher College Grilling and Barbecuing Society. Uh, the student engagement team plans a lot of our social activities on campus, comedians, bands, musicians, movie nights, ice cream socials, dances. Um, they also plan and host our signature event every year, Get Into Goucher Day gig, uh, which is a long-standing Goucher tradition that we've had for generations. It's this great spring festival where classes are canceled from noon on a Friday afternoon and in usually in April or early May. Uh, and there's a community picnic, uh, live music, tie-dye t-shirts, rock climbing wall, moon bounces, games, food trucks, um, little uh, other vendors and merchants selling stuff. It's just a really great day to kind of come together as a community. Uh, the Gopher Hole is a great little student run cafe. Our mascot is the Gopher. Um, and so that's why we have the Gopher Hole. It's a student little student run cafe. They do like open mic nights and poetry nights and pub nights. It's just a great place to kind of go and hang out. Uh, they have some really great snacks there too. I had one of the best quesadillas I've ever had uh, down in the gopher hole. Additionally, we also have a robust wellness and recreation office that plans things like fitness classes like Hilt and Zumba. Uh, the fitness studio is actually over in the first year student village. Um, <clears throat> they also sponsor our club and intramural sports. Uh, speaking of sports, we are a Division three institution offering both men's and women's sports. Uh, here's a shot of the men's sports and I have another slide. Uh, with the women's sports club show in just a second. Um, I love being at a division three institution because there is this emphasis on student athlete, this recognition that being a student is your primary responsibility. Um, and so uh, really committed to that kind of development of student and, and, and that athletic piece being kind of a great supplement and a great addition to the kind of college experience. Uh, we're a part of the landmark conference, which puts us in a conference of similar sized schools, um, which is nice. It allows us to be competitive within the conference. We're not in a conference with like much larger D3 institutions that are with deeper rosters and are putting more resources into their programming. Um, really, uh, again, allowing us to be competitive. Our men's tennis team, for instance, four feet of the conference championship last year. Uh, our golf team won their first year existence. We've had a history of success in lacrosse and soccer and in basketball. Additionally, we have a varsity equestrian program that is a part of the IHSA, the Intercollegiate Horse Show Association. And the cool thing with this is that the riding facilities and the stables are actually on campus. So the college owns 28 and a half horses. Yes, I said half because we do have a mini horse whose name is Cookie and it's awesome and it's there to help socialize new horses when they get there uh, but everything is on campus it's like an incredibly competitive team uh, they've placed in the top 10 in the nation every year that I've been a goucher and I've been a goucher for eight years now and now twice in my time at goucher we've had the national champion rider uh, so a really strong history of and legacy of excellence in this program the other cool thing is that <clears throat> even if you're not a varsity equestrian athlete you can take horseback riding classes it actually counts as a gym class so you can do it for credit which is really awesome uh, so a cool little fun thing. Uh, who knew a college 20 minutes north of Baltimore has horses on it, right? That's awesome. I want to talk just briefly about what life looks like after graduation. Uh, and I imagine that you're probably sitting there going, I haven't even applied yet. Why are you talking about what life looks like after graduation? Uh, and that's because college is an investment. You're investing time, money, energy, and effort into your experience. Uh, and, and out of that investment, you want to get a return. You want to get into grad school. You want to get a job. And so I'm happy to tell you that 96% of our grads uh, are, in, are either pursuing uh, further education, they're getting grad schools, or they're getting a job within one year of graduation. Uh, so within that first year, 96% of the graduates are getting a job, they're getting into grad school. And this is the average of the last five graduating classes. So a strong history of success here. Uh, here's some places our students have gone on, <coughs> excuse me, to graduate school in recent years. Um, I always love to point out the number of international universities that appear on this list. Uh, I think, you know, given the, the commitment to a global education and a global experience as part of our undergrad experience, our students kind of want to go back abroad for their grad school experiences. In terms 
of employment. These are places our students have gone on to re recently. I really love the diversity of organizations here, everything from Apple and Northrop Grumman to Baltimore City Public, Public Schools uh, to the Ovarian Cancer Research Alliance. One of the things I love to point out uh, is the num a large number of our students choose to give a year or two years of their lives over to long-term service work and commit to something like the Peace Corps or Teach for America. Uh, so a really strong commitment to social justice as part of the experience. Uh, but your education at Goucher isn't just uh, a short return. It's not just getting into grad school. It's not just getting that first job. Uh, it's a long-term return on your investment. Uh, there was a really great study done by Georgetown University Center on Education and the Workforce that looked at what was the value of a certain degree or a degree from, a, from certain institutions uh, at longer ranges now, 20, 30, 40 years after graduation. We were very excited to find out that we've ranked in the top 20% of all colleges nationwide, uh, that 40 years out, our grads were making close to a million dollars in what they call net present value, which is just a way of saying how much a sum of money in the future is worth today. Uh, so making a million dollars in today's money. And that's because of the kind of educational experience that Goucher is providing. Uh, we're really focused on development of our students as critical thinkers, as learners. Uh, so they're able to adapt and change as things adapt and change. Uh, we are incredibly proud of the experience that we offer at Goucher um, and we're very <clears throat> honored to have been recognized by a number of organizations for uh, for the work that we're doing. One of my personal favorites uh, is you know for I think five or six years in a row now we've been named one of the most innovative colleges in the country because of the type of educational experience uh, that we are offering and so uh, I love particularly that one's a big honor because it is voted on by presidents and vice presidents of other colleges and universities so it's other colleges saying Goucher is doing really cool work. Um, so uh, at that point, this uh, so that was a little bit about Goucher. Uh, hopefully you feel uh, you can, can differentiate us from other schools you might be looking at. Uh, we have about nine or so minutes left. Um, and so I would love uh, if you want to use the Q&A feature, uh, type in your questions uh, and move into more of an open question and answer format. Uh, I'm here to answer your questions. Don't be shy. I think we have a student with us. I don't know. Can, can you hear me, Christopher? I can. And we, there is a student. I, I'm just, I don't know if they have any questions or not. Uh, I, I think the student's name is Goldie. So Goldie, if you can hear me, um, please feel free to ask questions because now is a great time. You have, awesome. <laughs> there we go. Wonderful. Um, is there an, a campus art gallery? Yes, there are actually quite a few. Um, so we have the uh, Rosenberg Art Gallery, which tends to exhibit um, external or external artists. So we have, uh, typically we'll have an art show come in, I would say, and it comes in for usually like three, four months, uh, and then we swap it out for another one. Uh, at the end of the spring semester is when it converts over to a student art gallery and all the student artwork is displayed uh, that they've been working on that year. Uh, there's the Sibler Art Gallery that's in our Athenaeum, which is our kind of main libraries kind of student union building hang out on campus uh, that also brings in external artists but also shows works that are housed in our arts and artifact collection we have an over 3,000 piece art and artifact collection um, uh, we had a founder who in the late 1800s early 1900s was doing a lot of traveling and collected a lot of things during his travel um, so we sometimes will put some of those items on display uh, and then there is a gallery within the arts building uh, that kind of shows student work all throughout the year um, stuff that's being done uh, in their different classes. So uh, there are three art galleries on campus. Any other? Oh, you're welcome. Any other questions, Goldie? Awesome. Well, thank you for tuning in, Goldie, uh, and, and being part of the presentation. I hope you learned a little bit more about Goucher. Uh, I am the, the counselor who works with students from Ohio, so uh, if you do have additional questions, my name and my face are on our website, so feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, but thank you for tuning in, and I will turn it back over uh, to uh, close out the session. So, Goldie, thank you so much for joining us, and please know that this if you need to show this to parents, friends, other relatives, 
This will be on our Ohio Admission Counselor site. It is www.oacac.org. And Christopher, thank you so much for joining us in Ohio tonight. And yes. um, Goldie, I hope everything goes well with your college search. Thank you both. Thank you, everyone. Good night from Ohio Association of College Admission Counselors. Good night.